This is Absolute Justice by Henri de Gutierrez. I woke this morning with a start, a rap upon my door. Wake, good sir, came the call. It is dawn, or could be four. I lay there for a moment. Was all as it had seemed? Was this all reality? Was it but a dream? And suddenly it came quite clear. It was my servant in the He had come to waken me as a thousand times before. And then it did occur to me why such an early call. It was an appointment I'd agreed to last night down in the hall. You see, there'd been a grand occasion, a gathering extraordinaire. The Duke had thrown a party. The whole county had been there. And I had been long conversing with a gentleman before. On the art of ballad, a truly noble sport. He said, what do you ever alt? You'll have to sweep just past your knee. Not so, said I, in my turn. I'll have to disagree. It is only proper when you bow that your hat may have brushed the floor. This, my friends, is more correct, not less, and nothing more. He said, do you think, good sir, I know not wrong from right? I said, nay, my lord, you've merely not been shown. This is your courage, my Am I to understand? He said, from you I'm to be schooled? I, I said, a bit too loud, as you wish to be a fool. Silence echoed through the hall as the gauntlet landed at my feet. However, we were gentlemen, we not brawl in the street. We'd set a time and place and appear at the appointed hour. The time would be at daybreak, the place in the old church town. Now as I dressed my spirits high, I had waited for so long. My first duel as a gentleman had already begun. I took my sword into my hand. I had all that I would need, all the while mulling over what my instructor had paid for. He said, don't hold your blade too tightly and don't close up your steps. Remember, thrust the tip, don't push it. It's a rapier, not a lance. Keep your elbow firm and tuck your chin in tight. For it matters not if you win, if you didn't do it right. And for goodness sake, if nothing else, bow first and do your crossing, or you won't put graces on your side and someone important might be watching. Now as I walked down the street, I passed the school I had attended as a lad. As I strolled through the town market, I was suddenly stricken sad. No, not that I might never see another blossoming flower, but that no one would see me in this, my fight. See, duels are a private thing, not a spectator's game. Only combatants in their seconds, not the crowds, a tournament thing. And before I knew I had reached the church, I could see the field I saw, not remembering the mile I had just walked as if a jaunt across the lot. I met the man with the fight with a nod of my head, and just fled back in disgust. Is that something I had said? Oh yes, a point on etiquette. We're not supposed to speak. At this point, talk is useless. To attempt it would seem weak. So now then, down to business. Let nothing lessen our resolve. We shall fight in single combat until justice has been solved. Till each is truly satisfied that his honor has been repaired, or until a fatal wounding, or until one's life is spared. It is only then that it can be said that justice has been done. It is only then that a gentleman can know that he won. And so I entered upon the field, prepared to risk my life, to prove in the eyes of God which one of us was right. One bow to the crown, a quick sign of the cross, a salute to my opponent. We must be courteous at all costs. And now it starts off slow. No one's in haste. We circle each in turn, each looking for a weakness, if any can be. Then all at once is first engaged, a simple thrust on Pantheon, without a flinch or a conscious thought I've carried the way. His second move, a bit more involved, to beat double step touche. Still with no problem on my part, I defended to his dismay. And now it's my turn for the attack. My prowess I shall prove. I take reverse thrust over his left arm. It was my most favorite move. To my surprise, it landed home. He had not blocked in time. Though nothing fatal by any call, still first blood was mine. I stepped back smartly, gave some and called attention to my blow, and said, Sir, if you will yield to the surgeon. He said, Not yet. For a scratch. I have no need of that leech, but if thou art still willing to pull, I have much still yet to touch. Very well, I said. A bit bothered by his tone, however, not to worry. I had lessons, my opinion. As we continued, my confidence grew for each attack he made. Without a problem, I could speak. I would easily obey. But now every swordsman knows. Never let down your guard. Not an ounce. But for just as you think you've won, tis then that your enemy does. And that was my fatal flaw. I let down just a bit. One parry made, one come too late. And my opponent scored a hit. It landed well, a solid blow. I hadn't even seen it thrown, but there was no denying it. Blood through my shirt was showing. It landed on my upper arm, though not my favorite hand. Still, it was a gaping wound on this field I should not stand. To continue might cost my life. I, I fatally bleed here on the field. And no one would be dishonored if to this man I would 
however anger filled my heart, and I would not be forced to say, my lord, in this matter, you were right, you barely won today. Instead, spurred on by rage, I said, you've not yet won this bout. While I still stand and you yet live, we must still work this out. And without letting him speak a word, whether courteous or no, I lunged at him and gave him thrust. At least a hundred blows, like a dervish I left upon him, who was now on the retreat. Not one attack could he advance, not one move I could not meet. And then, with a grand salute, I beat fake triple disengaged. And landed home. Left sent to chest. Buried well half my blade. I held thrust for a moment as the blood ran down my blade, unaware of my surroundings or the damage I had made. My opponent looked to his wound as his sword fell to the ground. And then he gazed about the field as if he'd heard a sound. Perhaps he heard the chariots of death, which heralded forth with hate. But to my surprise, there seemed to be no fear upon his face. He just looked deep into my eyes, the stare which pierced my heart, and said, Well struck. Please forgive, good sir. You were correct from the start. You've proven you're a gentleman man of honor and of name, and if any would remember me, I hope they could but say the same. And when all at once he faltered and gave gas, this time had come, and collapsed there on the field of the rising of the sun. Reality came rushing back, I swooped to break his fall. What had I done? I killed him. It was utterly appalled. We quibbled over which was a more correct posture when you bowed. Certainly not worth dying for, it seems oh, so trivial now. My second pulled me away as the Kyurgeons went to his aid, but no mortal could save him now. And you the wound I bear. My second took me by the hand. He said, I'm glad you're safe from home. And then he led me from the field as a surgeon wrapped my arm. He said, you fought nobly, lad. Your teacher would be proud, but you should leave now. Quickly, sir. Before this draws a crowd. So I left the church to its morning bell. As I listened to its sound, I was suddenly aware of all that was around me. The song of the birds in the pines, the smell of the morning breeze, the beauty of a sunrise as it glistens to the trees. All these daily subtleties that we take for little worth were now as if I was seeing them for the first. I walked home in silence, absorbed deep in my thoughts. And considering when our time has come, we may as well cast lots. I had been victorious, but was I right or wrong? A bit of sweet this encounter I had wanted for so long. I have been victorious. No, the crowds will speak. I'll be the talk of the town for at least a week. And then someone else will quibble over something twice as right. Someone else will die in another useless fight. Now, please don't get me wrong. There are things we must defend. The slighting of a lady or the wronging of a friend. But in this case, could it be said that justice has been done? Had either been victorious and anyone really won? I guess one thing I've learned from this life is too precious a gift. The chance of a hasty world is to put oneself at risk. Always be courteous. Don't be quick to the blade. Diplomacy is always better to undo the mistakes you make. And remember, you cannot avoid, no matter how hard you try, if always by the sword you live, always by the sword you die.